And you, when will you begin that long journey into yourself? This is a sobering quote from the mystic Sufi poet Rumi. For me, it gets to the heart of the human experience. Wrestling with our internal angels and demons until we arrive at a satisfying sense of self. That process of self-discovery is a humbling one, often resulting in the production of humility. My name is Rodney Lemery, and over the next two years, I have the great blessing to serve the Church of the Larger Fellowship as a learning fellow, focusing mostly on our prison ministry network, Worthy Now, with our director, Mandy Goheen. Additionally, for the past two years, I have acted as an assistant chaplain serving the incarcerated folks of Solano County, California. The fact that I'm serving two populations of our incarcerated siblings is most definitely an un unexpected twist in my life and has provided me, well, uh, remarkable opportunities of humility. You see, my father has been in law enforcement in one way or another my entire life. He served in the Army as a military police officer prior to my birth and continued on in, in civilian capacity as a police officer, then a detective, and eventually retiring as a lieutenant in his local poli police department. As a result of being his child, reared in the bosom of law enforcement and white privilege, my understanding of the criminal justice system and the larger prison industrial complex was, as it turned out, a bit biased. You see, I was taught that anyone who finds themselves in prison or jail must deserve to be there. I could remain free if I would just not do those things that are illegal and always, always do what a police officer asks when and if I should encounter one. These beliefs, these beliefs that bad people do bad things and good people do good things, well, it's really just a horrible lie that we tell ourselves. Like Rumi's quote implies, life isn't that simple. The journey is so far more complex. My own struggle and reconciliation with white supremacy culture has forced me to see that my position in life is largely responsible for where I am today. And isn't that the definition of humility? Experiencing something that places it into perspective our own importance or lack thereof. So many of my past choices could easily have led me down a life of incarceration, but I was raised in a neighborhood not frequented by law enforcement, and my whiteness was the norm. I believe it actually kept me hiding in the crowds. The understanding of this privilege and its resulting humility has really modified my view of the criminal justice system and brought me into humility at the altar of human relationship. Additionally, my views of the larger prison industrial complex have expanded as well and are really informed by our universalist ancestors and the residual institutional memory of their work. Universalism has always held that we as humans are inherently worthy of divine love, not set apart from the holy, in need of some kind of salvation. But really, we are inextricably bound to the holy, already saved. One such universalist ancestor is Reverend Charles Spear. Some scholars suggest that he's actually the first American universalist to engage in prison reform. His work in our faith movement stressed rehabilitation rather than vindication for incarcerated people. He also worked for the full elimination of the death penalty and really had a large hand in the improvement of local jails. The embrace of the inherent worth and dignity of all people is what drove his work in the field of prison ministry. 
This is a similar sentiment that we see today with justice reformers like Brian Stevenson, who in his book, Just Mercy, is quoted as saying, we are more than the worst thing we have ever done. This sentiment is now my heart song. When I enter the jail or prison and share with an incarcerated person a moment of sadness, repentance, or even joy, my universalist value of seeing another's worth and dignity, even when their behavior has been harmful, dangerous, or yes, even vile, to me is the good news of our faith. In my two years serving the people of Solano County, I've had the privilege of learning that almost everyone I accompany is in the situation they are in through a series of unfortunate events. These events can range in complexity and seriousness from crimes of survival, like stealing a credit card to buy food, and other crimes, crimes of passion, like sexual misconduct, assault, or even murder. I return to the words of our religious ancestor, Charles Spear, who when talking about incarcerated people says, we, free worlders, say, when talking about incarcerated folks, unfortunate, for none deserve more pity than those who have no pity for themselves. Reverend Spear, like Rumi, understood the complexities of this life's journey and that the hardest part would be the humbling work that we're asked to do on our own spirit, our own psyche. Our universalism dictates that everyone has a story and our behaviors, however positive or however negative, are not related to our core worth. We are always beloved creatures of the divine. Our actions have the capability of oscillating and shifting between great good and great harm. I invite you to think about a time in your own life when perhaps you were so unhappy with who you were that your behavior reflected that intense feeling. Perhaps it was years ago, maybe it was yesterday, or possibly, just possibly, you're struggling with those feelings right now. The trick for all of us is when we are in those emotional prisons of self-worthlessness and shame to find a way to remember our own self-worth. And I believe humility is the key. My spiritual healer and supervisor, the Reverend Christiana Haida taught me that every morning I wake up, I should try to answer three questions. Am I good? Am I safe? Am I loved? She believes, as I do, that all of our behaviors in life are driven by a compulsion to answer these questions. This can happen in a healthy way when we recognize with humility that deep sense of self-worth that comes from within. Alternatively, when we can't humble ourselves to see that internal worth, we will often go outside of ourselves, desperate for other people or other experiences to help us feel and answer those questions. This may manifest as behaviors that really are not in our true best interest or put us into environments where we're more likely to experience run-ins with the law. If, however, I know that I am already inherently good, safe, and loved, well then, I really don't need the bottle of pills. I don't need the alcohol. I don't need sex to feed the missing sense of self-worth. Our ability to answer or not answer these questions really drives our behavior without ever touching our core inherent worth. This is the exciting gospel of universalism. I'm already worthy. You're already worthy. We are already 
worthy. So, over the next two years, as I serve the incarcerated members of our congregation, I really am going to try to anchor on our universalist humility, found in that belief that we are all worthy. This is really a joyous message of our religious ancestors. It empowers us to engage with ourselves and other in a deep journey of self-love and self-worth. Our Worthy Now program at the Church of the Larger Fellowship really provides ways for you to embark on this journey too. You could take a class to increase your understanding of the prison industrial complex or agree to commune with an incarcerated sibling through our pen pal program. However you choose to engage or not to, this journey is long, but we can do it together. I end our time today with the words from one of our incarcerated members, Chris, who writes, I would just like to thank all of you at the CLF for your continued support and compassion. I'm not perfect. I still do wrong, though each day I try to be a better person than the day before. A large part of my desire to change came from trying to live up to your principles. I finally learned that I had to embrace the principles in my own heart to change for myself. But the impetus came from the seed the CLF planted. I eagerly await the day I can attend a UU congregation in person. Until that day, I will continue to live the principles in the best way I can. Thank you for your support. Sincerely, a fellow traveler.